Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming back or for those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Joanna the Medium or Joanna, I am a medium. Um, these are going to be your messages for the month of April 2019. I think on two videos I said March, uh, please disregard that, I was doing them in March. Um, so, but they are for April. There is, so if you hear March, um, it is April. It's in fact for April. Um, what can I say? Um, I'm, I'm gonna be very brief. If you guys would like to have a session with me, uh, a personal session with me, that information is down below. You know how to find me. Uh, for those of you who are my clients, thank you so much. For those of you who are watching, thank you so much. For those of you who are subscribing, thank you so much for giving me your time. And I'm going to state my intention. My intention is to give you something to think about. My intention is to inspire a thought. Hopefully a thought that will lead to a different conclusion that will allow you to have a different perception, which then will allow you to shift your reality. So that is always my highest intention, which means sometimes certain things will come in in terms of predictions, and sometimes it's going to be way bigger than that in terms of what's happening energetically. And based on that, you can decide how to use this information or this energy uh, in order to help you. So that is my intention for you of course it may not um, it may not make sense to everybody uh, everyone is different however I feel a majority of you will uh, be able to understand these messages at some point whether it's in April May or June or the following months uh, for some of you the energies you may have been feeling for quite some time already so it may be an indication of what has been happening uh, with you uh, keep, so keep that in mind. Um, and if nothing makes sense, don't worry about it, but do maybe check in down the road uh, because chances are it will make perfect sense to you. And also listen to your other signs. I also will say this, these energies uh, or the messages, even though they're by a zodiac sign, it is very clear to me, and that's what I'm being told, that uh, even if you are drawn to a certain sign that you don't normally listen to, um, let's say you click on one of my videos, you're a Cancer, but you click on Pisces, and I don't know, you clicked it because I don't know, you just clicked it, and then all of a sudden, there is some message in there that resonates with you 100%. Don't dismiss this message, because although it's not under your sign, it is a message for you, and therefore you're hearing it. So that's how I would encourage you to use um, use my messages. They're, they're, they're mostly about universal laws. It's how things work and how things are uh, being seen from a higher perspective, so to speak. Um, and I think that's all I have. Um, extremely, extremely transformative month. Every single sign I've done without a, without, without a doubt, every single sign that, I, that I've done for April, extraordinary, powerful energy of transformation. And um, I know that March has been kind of feeling that way. I have certainly been going through my own transformation and I know it's not over yet. Um, so uh, it was actually incredible to see that in every single sign. So with that said, I'm going to um, just move on and let you enjoy the rest of the messages. I wish you best of luck. Of course, if you would like a private session, that information is down below. If you would like to comment, please do so as well. I always love hearing them or seeing them. Thank you again so much for giving me your time. Thank you for participating in my journey. It is actually because of you that I am on this journey because if it wasn't for you, the listener, I would have, well, I would have, there would be no need for me to do this. So thank you once again. I wish you absolutely wonderful time in April and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, let's get started. Hello, beautiful sign of Gemini. These are going to be your messages for the month of um, April, 2019. I almost said November. Uh, so put November kind of in the calendar somewhere and see if there is something interesting that might transpire in the month of November. Uh, but it's coming up for some of you and I hear the word move. Um, obviously this is not covering November, but for some of you, um, there seems to be a move that is approaching that will perhaps take uh, take place in the month of November. November is also a month of 11, 11th month, which I'm being asked to talk about, which to me represents 11 is balance. It's the proverbial justice card in a traditional tarot deck. Um, so there is there seems to be some importance with the month of November for some of you. It um, let me just go through what I have for you first. I have to say that this is um, 
um, I feel uh, I, I very much feel a transformative transformative energy with with you. Um, however, in all fairness, I have to say that this is how I felt in majority of the signs that I did for this month, and you're no different. I just feel that we're under certain conditions that are very apropos for transformation. Therefore, um, it affects us all in various ways. When I was connecting with the uh, with the energy for Gemini for the month of, I see, I want to say November, for the month of um, April, I kept seeing the word realization. And I kind of had to dive deeper into it just to help me figure out what that word meant because it will mean different things for different people um and what i saw is that uh many of you and this is this is the image that i saw so i'm going to show it to you so it makes sense you're moving from this to a release so what i actually wrote was uh moving from a place of resistance to a release and the words are personal responsibility and patterns i feel like First and foremost, I, I can see some of you have been going through, well, a lot of changes. And these changes have been happening for quite some time. You may have been in a process of changes for quite a while. And as a matter of fact, you may have been in process of changes for so long, you can't wait for it to be over, uh, which is, um, I'm going to jump a little bit all over the place. So just bear with me, which is. Uh, based on what I'm getting right now, makes sense why the Ten of Swords in reverse is showing up as one of the first cards. So many of you are approaching an end of what I want to call uh, an end of a very drastic cycle. Now, why do I want to say the word drastic? Because um, uh, it's based on the experiences you have uh, you have had, and those experiences were. Uh, well, they were drastic. So uh, some of you may have moved home. Some of you may have lost jobs. Some of you may have uh, switched part, switched, uh, switched jobs. Some of you may have um, parted ways with uh, someone or something. There seems to be a lot of significant changes that I see have been go has been going have been going through for the last little while. So obviously, this is not going to be for all of you. I hope not. But it's definitely going to be for those of you who are meant to hear it. Point is, if there's anything that you've been struggling with, particularly when it comes to the idea that is um, that is um, driven by the fear of rejection, I feel many of you will uh, come to a point, uh, certainly between whenever you're hearing this and the end of November or the end of this year, where... The image I saw is uh, somebody getting in a taxi and the feeling was that whoever it is um, getting in that taxi, they have a place to go. It's almost like they're boarding a plane. Plane to me symbolizes journey. So some of you may actually be boarding plane and you may actually be moving to a different country by the end of this year. But obviously that's not going to be for many of you, uh, certainly not for most of you. But for the others of you, this is symbolic of an internal journey of an emotional journey a mental journey and it symbolizes to me uh, you making the choice to let some things go or leave some things behind even though these things were important at some point and you're choosing to either do ha, uh, move on or take a completely different direction um i saw the idea of change and the actual image of of that was shown to me, which is very symbolic of uh, wind was shown to me, which is symbolic of change. So there is no question in my mind that majority of you who will listen to this, who um, this will resonate with, have been going through, and I want to say there were drastic changes for quite some time. Um, I felt that this change, whatever this change is and has been going through, um, offers you a window of opportunity. And the two of wands is staring at me right in the face. And this is shown to me in a distance position, in a position where it's not right now, it's somewhere in a distance. Perhaps it's referring to November, but many of you will proudly announce that you are moving on to something else or something different over the next little while. And the reason for that is because the uh, world card 
world message symbolically represents an end of a chapter, an end of a journey, an end of a cycle. Let's put it that way. Um, and it's also symbolic of a brand new beginning. So what did I write here? Um, yes, I saw a new journey. You were determined and it had to do with realization of your goals. Now, what I also saw, and I don't know how this is going to make sense for some of you, but I'm just going to go with it. Um, hopefully when I go through the cards, it'll all come together. Um, I saw someone volunteering with um, volunteering and particularly it was volunteering services feeding homeless. Now, whenever this comes through, it is always to show me that one of the best ways that we can receive is when we put ourselves in a position to give to others unconditionally. And giving to others does not mean giving our money, particularly money we don't have. But what we do have is we have time. And if you are someone who has been struggled, who has been struggled, who has been struggling for quite some time, and you have been feeling in a rut and you feel like you are, uh, life is not, well, life is not abundant in, life is not abundant or you're not experiencing abundance. Um, one of the ways that you can uh, shift your mindset, and we'll talk about your mindset, is by putting yourself in a position where you can volunteer your time to others, your heart to others, um, to those who are less fortunate than you. And it is in giving that we, uh, that we receive. And I don't need to go on about this. You guys get the idea. When we give unconditionally, when we give of ourselves, uh, it feels good. And that allows us to receive when that happens, when we feel that we're in that state. Um, we basically become a magnet to receiving more of the same. So am I saying that all of you have to go and run into uh, to do volunteering? No, not necessarily. But because it is coming up. I feel that for some of you, this will this will speak home. This will speak to your heart. Perhaps it's something you have thought about. Perhaps um, maybe you can be. Uh, maybe you thought about volunteering in an animal shelter. To this is about you giving your time and f and energy. Not particularly if you have been struggling financially or with your own abundance. It is uh, when we when we are struggling a lot. And we find ourselves in a lack situation for quite some time. It becomes kind of, it becomes, be, begins to kind of seep into our skin and eventually we end up wearing it. In other words, the lack of abundance eventually becomes our way of thinking. And we don't even think about it. It just we just assume that role because we are faced with, well, having lack of something for quite some time. So, but that's a vicious cycle because when we get stuck in it, we are stuck in that energy and like attracts like. So we're constantly uh, moving in this vicious cycle. And one effective way, a very effective way to shift that cycle, to shift the energy is to volunteer and give yourself and give of yourself to to either a human being, another human being, a, 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 a cause or, uh, yeah, a shelter. You guys figure out what that may mean for you. Um, it puts you in a space of receiving. However, this is the, this is the caveat. Uh, caveat, I want to say. If you are volunteering because that's something you need to do in order to receive, it ain't going to happen because it's not coming from, it's not coming from the space of you wanting to do it. It comes from a place of you thinking you have to do it. It's a completely different vibration. So I'm not going to go on too long about this, but I feel like this will speak to some of you. The idea of initi initiation also came up and I'm trying not to, uh, I mean, initi initiation can mean so many things. It could mean that you are being initiated um, to something. Uh, this could be um, a project. This could be work. This could be, this could be anything, but it feels more internal than that. It feels almost like, actually, let me just see if I can get uh, more clarity on this idea of initiation. 
something, it's almost like something flips in your heart, uh, in your heart chakra. I see this internal, internal switch going on. Um, it could be because you are going through some sort of a process of initiation. Perhaps you are um, taking some courses and part of those courses is some sort of initiation. The, 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 the word can be, I guess, used in various different ways. I'm going to kind of leave that because that will speak to some of you very directly and some of you, it'll just move on from it because it's not meant for you. But the word initiation was be, was being shown. Um, is there anything else I want to show them? No. Okay. So as I mentioned, the first card that comes up for you is the Ten of Swords. When I look at this card, um, and I, for those of you who this is not, this is your first time watching, I do, I'm not a tarot reader. I mean, I look at pictures and I know some of the symbolism and I'm learning, but I'm, I'm not a tarot reader. I read cards my own way. So to me, this represents an end of a cycle. Uh, I want to say the word karmic. So to me, karmic symbolizes something that one has been struggling with for quite some time. Um, I hear lack of resources. I hear feeling like the world has stabbed you in the back. Now, that's a pretty substantial um, statement. And, and I feel it. I feel it in my heart and I feel it in my throat. And that when when we feel that... It is because something substantial must have happened, probably more than once, that made you lose faith, perhaps in others, but also in yourself. And that may have transpired long, long time ago, or, or that's something that you have been um, going through, uh, going through in the last little while. However, I feel whatever it is you have been going through for a while does stem from something that has transpired in the past and the idea of loss is coming up so i'm just going to move on to the next message so just to conclude that what this card means to me it means that many of you are approaching an end of a cycle where you will find solutions and resolutions to the problems that previously you had no solutions to or for and perhaps it's because you will have a certain realization and perhaps it's because you're going to be uh, abstaining from seeing yourself in a certain light that then puts you in the idea of luck or in the space of luck. And then you will reclaim your power, if I can call it that way. And you were, uh, you were assume a different role, a different identity. And with that, you will become a magnet towards attracting uh, what more of what you want. What we're dealing with here is the Five of Cups. And to me, the Five of Cups is always consciousness of poverty or poverty consciousness. It is rooted in lack. This lady in this particular uh, vision is, um, she's distraught. She has these three cups that are broken and she's distraught. However, there is two cups here. She's not looking at it. She's not paying attention to it. Her focus is what she does not have. Her focus is on what is lost. Now, that sort of focus, when it's assumed for a prolonged period of time, eventually becomes to consume you and you become it. You become this person. And um, I'm not saying whoever is listening to this is this person, but chances are if you are being drawn to this message there is something in it for you if not right now then maybe later um so co poverty consciousness is what's coming up here now the reason why this lady is distraught because she lost something she lost something that at one point either belonged to her or made her happy so this is stemming from you having lost something in the past this could be in the past as far as your childhood, or this could be in the past as far as two or three years ago or two or three months ago. The idea here is if you keep on focusing on what you have lost and you're not focusing on what you still have, you might find yourself being in that vicious cycle. And uh, perhaps that's the realization that you're going to have, that in order for you to have a brand new beginning and to have more prosperity on, and opportunities and doors open to you, you have to be willing to let go of needing to focus on something that is not. 
and instead focus on something that is. For some of you, this may be difficult to accomplish. Perhaps you're in a position where you don't have very much. Uh, perhaps you don't have a lot into your name. Perhaps um, you know you are really struggling, and that is to not that is that is not it's not to minimize that you're struggling, but in order for you to move on from the struggle, something has to change. Something has to shift. So without denying the truth that you are struggling, maybe you can find a way to focus on something positive in your life and. Um, I often say, because it's been said to me before, if, if there is nothing positive to focus on in your life, then you have to check your mind. You have to, it's, your wiring is, your wiring is off. And I can hear a whole bunch of people protesting and I wouldn't necessarily argue, but I would say there's got to be at least one thing that you can be grateful for, even if it's just you being able to watch this video and many others and to be able to take fresh breath of air. If you can, if you can find that to focus on and be grateful for that, I feel that would be a great beginning. And um, obviously, I don't need to move on. The more we focus on what we have, the more we are in the space of abundance. And you can be you can be a person who has everything that you want physically, but still not be very happy. So um, you know the proverb you're saying, money won't buy you happiness, but um, um, but it certainly does um, allow you to feel happier because when you have money and when you have abundance, you are much more relaxed, you struggle less. So I don't know why I'm talking about money here. I, I, must, I, I feel this is going to be financial for many of you. Um, the two of wands represents career. It can, accept, can represent love, yes, um, in either case, it is something that is solid, something that is that is tangible. And I feel like many of you have experienced a lot of loss in your life. And we all have. I don't think there's a person in this world that has not experienced loss because it's part of our experience in this human body. Um, but whoever I'm connecting with, there, there's, there is a considerable loss uh, at least at some point in your life, and I feel that you are still in a recovery process. So why why am I talking about this? Well, the idea of judgment and Six of Cups, both in reverse, come up. And my sense is that many of you have been feeling this way for quite some time. If you haven't, then this message is not for you. If you have, then you might want to listen to it again at some other time and see if it makes even more sense to you later. But I feel this is kind of sort of where you're at. Um, you're not happy with where you're at. Um, you're mourning perhaps the loss of what once was, but your focus is not on what, what still is, that's good, but it's um, focused on uh, what you don't have. So if this is you, if you are guilty of feeling this way, and listen, we all feel this way at some point. There is no such thing as good or bad feeling. I always say, feeling simply tells you where you're at at any given moment. It is how we deal with those feelings, what we do about them, how long we stay in them. I mean, what we do with feelings is is essentially what gets us into trouble. Um, but feeling in and of itself is not good or bad. So there's, it's it's normal to have these moments in life. It's absolutely normal. And I would never say deny yourself feeling that because it's part of your emotional experience. However, when we get stuck in this, it is because we are perpetual, perpetually fueling our energies into lack, something that is no longer or something that is not, okay? So the idea of judgment and six of cups in reverse, um, when I looked closer at this card, I focused on these figures here 
And for the very first time, I mean, I've had this deck for quite some time. And again, I'm not a tarot reader, but I, I look at different things and different things are highlighted to me uh, for, in various various times. And I've never looked at these women, looks like, before, but I was drawn to it today. And you see these three women here? They almost walk like they're shadows. They, 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 walk, they walk aimless. And this one lady is jumping over and it's almost like she is moving past her aimlessness. And I feel that this is how some of you have felt or how some of you feel. Perhaps you feel aimless. Now, the reason why this is being shown to me is because it's telling me that there is some residual energy from the past that you are still um, fueling um, and s resistance. There is, there is some sort of a resistance um, to letting go of whatever it is that you are um, not happy about. And loss is not a happy thing ever. As a matter of fact, loss sucks. Um, but once loss has occurred, there is a need to accept it. And when we don't have acceptance, we always fight with what is. And when that happens, we're never truly at peace with ourselves because we're always fighting. We're always at odds. And incidentally, one of the messages that you have is calling your our parts home, which is the subconscious component that's trying to be that's trying to be released. This is a message of um, integration. If uh, this is uh, calling our parts home, parts are aspects of ourselves that we uh, deem unimportant, not good, terrible, um, disgusting, not not worthy, not 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 intelligent enough, not smart enough. Whatever it is that we that whatever labels that we put on ourselves or others have put on us, and we pushed those aspects away from us. Um, it is, a, it, it is, um, that is what this is talking about. So I'm going to, I'm going to say it in a different way because I feel like I'm getting lost with the words here. This is a time for you to recognize yourself as a, as a person who is valuable, even though you have things about you that you may not like. In other words, it's about, it's about beginning the process of integration, reintegration. And why do we need to reintegrate? Well, when we in reintegrate, we become whole. When we disintegrate, we reject aspects of ourselves. And those rejected aspects, it's, they act almost like voids. And these voids will always need some kind of fulfillment. So... What I'm trying to say here is, because we're dealing with rejection, one of the things that came up was rejection. If you have certain beliefs about yourself, that you're not good enough, that you're not this, that you're not smart enough, that you're not capable enough, perhaps you have been told when you were young that you are this or this or this or this or that, and you then, uh, and you then adopted that as your truth, essentially would have become part of your personality. However, you're approaching a time where certain certain pieces will fall together um, in order to help you realize those things. And the moment you have a realization is the moment where you can release yourself from whatever it is that has been holding you back. Now, this the end of a cycle and the six of cups i am pretty certain that for majority of you who are dealing with this sort of feeling it has to do with some unfinished business in your childhood 
for some of you, you may have been compared to others um, uh, and not in a positive way. Uh, for some of you, you may have grown up thinking and believing that you were not enough somehow for whatever reason. Um, your teacher told you, your mom told you, your dad told you, your society told you, whatever it is, and, and you assumed that role upon yourself. Um, however, um, once you kind of tap into what that is, and in order to do that, it's really important to be honest with yourself. And that can be a very hard thing. And the only reason why it's hard is because we judge ourselves. If you were to look at your past without judgment, simply from a point of observation in order to educate yourself on certain things, and if you had no judgment about yourself, looking at it in the mirror wouldn't be so difficult. It's only difficult because we're so goddamn judgmental about ourselves and that's why it's hard. But the seer is a message that comes up. So seer is quite obvious uh, what it means. Seer is someone who can see. Uh, when he shows up in this position, he is asking you to look at the things perhaps that you have chosen not to see. If you have been telling yourself lies for whatever reason, and we all do it for various reasons, um, chances are these lies no longer serve you. And why would we tell ourselves lies? Well, for various reasons. We want to believe certain things. We don't want to deal with certain things. We don't know how to deal with certain things. We're too proud. We're too, we're too, we feel we can't deal with whatever it is. I mean, there's a gazillion reasons why we don't want to see certain things. And sometimes we're just not ready. Sometimes we just need to go through certain scenarios in order to have a certain experience, in order to use that experience somewhere else in, our fu in your future. Uh, and I feel for many of you, you are at the point of your own evolution where you are ready to leave all that behind. Again, the um, image of someone getting into a taxi and it symbolizes to me a brand new journey. I feel many of you starting in the month of April, see November comes up, um, you will begin to take responsibility into your hands, but it's not that you haven't taken your responsibility before. You begin to take your, you begin to take responsibility more seriously, responsibility for yourself more seriously. Uh, what does that mean? It means that you decide that you're going to look at the things you wanted to avoid looking at for whatever reason, and you're going to make a commitment to yourself. And the commitment will be something like this. Wherever I am right now, I choose to take responsibility for it. Not because I blame myself, but because I am partly in the process of creation and part of me has created this. The part of me that has created this is usually, is probably stemming from lack mentality, but that's okay because now that I know that, I can do something to change it. And the moment you allow yourself to approach it that way is the moment where you begin to release yourself from your own prison. Um, the medicine wheel also came up in in um, in reverse. And whenever I see this medicine wheel, yeah, medicine wheel, whenever it comes up in, um, in this position, by the way, it's a sign of completion, but when it comes up in this position, it is uh, saying that it's time to start your healing journey. If you have been putting healing off, if healing yourself off, if you've been putting healing yourself off, or if you have um, not paid enough attention to what is, and um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. This message essentially says it's time to start the healing process. And first part of the healing process is a recognition and a, and a realization. It's to be able to look at your life and say, okay, this is where I'm at. Perhaps you're not, perhaps you're not thrilled with where you're at, but 
tomorrow is another day. And though you do not, may, you may not have a crystal ball, neither do I, what's going to happen tomorrow, the one thing that I will assure you of is this, your tomorrow is a product of who you are today. So if today you are a person that is focusing on luck and on something that was lost and on something that is no longer and that is not focused on what you have, then this is what your day will be like tomorrow. If you can focus instead on things that you do have, even though they may not be perfect, but if you have a whole roof under you, under your, over your head, if you have people who love you, if you have food to eat, if you have shelter, if you have friends, if you have family, all those things, if you can breathe and you are healthy for the most part, all those things are something to be grateful for. And I'm sure it comes as no news that gratitude is what brings more abundance into our life. Sometimes when we get stuck in this mindset, it's, it's difficult to do. But um, I feel many of you will have this realization over the next few months between now and looks like November. Um, so this is, uh, this is a phenomenal thing. Leap of faith. Change takes courage. Courage is something that doesn't come, um, by, on its, on its, uh, by its, on its own. Courage is something that you prove to yourself as you go through an experience. So you're being asked to be courageous, um, Yes, you're being asked to be courageous. And perhaps it's the new journey that you're undertaking. And yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. And last but not least, this card in this position signifies faith and trust. In reverse, it says, who do you trust? What do you trust? Do you trust that you're never going to have anything good? If that's what you trust, that's your religion. Do you trust that um, people are always going to disappoint you? Well, if that is your trust, that is your religion. If you trust in lack of abundance in your life, that is your trust, that is your religion. And chances are, when you trust those things, those are the things that you will prove to yourself. So. Perhaps turn this around and ask yourself this question. What is it in my life that I'm struggling with? And what part of me has helped me to attract that my situation to my to me, to myself? Again, without judgment, I can't stress this enough. It is a critical part of this equation. When we can look at ourselves as the artist with the paintbrush and the paint. Um, we look at ourselves as the creator and we can create whatever we desire. Sometimes we create based on other people and sometimes we create based on what we think that isn't necessarily all that great for you. But you're a creator nonetheless. So if you have created whatever you are dealing with, you can surely create something different. But that necessitates, is that the right word? shifting of vibration and your vibration is a byproduct of your thoughts and your emotions it's time to heal that's how i'm going to leave this because i felt i feel this went on for a little too long um extremely extremely transformative period for you and it is for most people but it for some for some of you this is this is no small potatoes. And um, I want to say this to you. Luck is on your side, not lack, L-A-C-K, luck, L-U-C-K. But as long as you believe in lack of luck, you'll never experience it. And with that, I'm going to, I'm going to finish that. Um, I hope this was helpful. This was slightly different than most of the other signs. If this made no sense to you right now, maybe listen to it down the road. Uh, chances are this will make sense to you at some point. Many of you are on a brink of an incredible breakthrough. And 
you know how the saying goes, the last 10 pounds is the hardest to lose. The last 10 mile is the hardest to run. Uh, you know, the last hour of night are the darkest. However it goes, you get the picture. If you've been struggling for a while, just uh, give it that extra push. And of course, if you would like a private session with me to see how this connects with your personal life, that information is down below. But you guys know how to do that. Thank you again so much. I wish you best of luck in the month of April. And please take care of yourself and see you soon.